Without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Hashim Kamali, the founding CEO of IAIS Malaysia and the author of the book The Middle Path of Moderation in Islam, to seek His Royal Highness' pleasure to deliver his remarks. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Min hadar. Duli yang maha mulia, Badu Kasri Sultan Firak Darul Ridwan, Sultan Nazrin Muizzuddin Shah, Ibn Al-Marhum Sultan Azlan Muhibbuddin Shah, Al-Mafur Lahu. Yang amat berbahagia, Tun Abdul Tun Abdullah Haji Ahmad Badawi, Chairman of International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies, Malaysia. Your Excellencies, Yang Bahagia, Tuan Haji Nasharuddin Mat Isa, CEO of Global Movement of Moderates Foundation, GMMF Malaysia. Tansri Tansri, Puansri Puansri, Datu Datu, Datin Datin, Hadirin Hadurat, Yang De Hormati Sekalia. Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of IAS Malaysia and my colleagues, I express our profound appreciation and gratitude to Tuanku for gracing this occasion. Your patronage and support for the advancement of better understanding of Islam in its encounter with global terrorism and extremism. Indeed, a huge torrent of misunderstanding of this religion that is facing us today. We are profoundly appreciative of your patronage. The book I wrote, The Middle Path of Moderation in Islam, The Quranic Principle of Wasatiya, is basically a reading in the sources of Islam, the Quran and Hadith and a review of the scholarly contribution of past and present into the sources of Islam that put together a number of principles from these sources that substantiate and advocate the middle path of moderation as the governing the governing principle of Islam. I begin by looking at the principal verse in the Quran on Wasatiya, on the middle part in Surah 2, Al Baqarah, Ayah, verse 143, which makes moderation in Wasatiya the principal assignment of the Muslim community in its capacity as witnesses unto themselves and over other people in their advocacy of justice and truth. That is the principal assignment of a witness. I have looked at the Quran commentaries, Al-Alusi, Al-Qurtubi, and others. They equate the middle path, Wasatiya in moderation, with justice. Wasatiya is another term for commitment to justice. Without justice, moderation would be an empty word. Yet, it is wasatiya, it is moderation that also subsumes and guides justice. A judge 
can be inclined on the side of severity or the opposite of that and therefore justice must also observe observe the requirements of moderation then the quran also provides in another address to the muslim community enjoining them on the idea of ta'aruf mutual recognition mutual recognition of the different other and it is ta'aruf in recognition of the kind that advocate friendship and peaceful coexistence this is another quranic manifestation in advocacy of the same principle the middle path of moderation the quran also enjoins the muslim ummah with the principle of consultation in shura this is the way that the muslims must address their own issues and issues of concern in their relationship with other communities in nations shura in consultation is a great moderator because it gives opportunity to all participants to express their views and arrive at moderated solutions another aspect of the same principle of the middle path is the principle of reason disagreement or ikhtilaf ikhtilaf is a recognized principle of islam it is in fact a separate discipline of learning in islamic jurisprudence courses or taught ikhtilaf in reason disagreement is manifested internally within the islamic tradition and also externally in our relations with other communities in nation the internal manifestations of reason disagreement is obvious we now have about eight different mazhabs in schools of thought all of them recognizing each other as valid and legitimate interpretations of islam ikhtilaf in reason disagreement provides space for freedom of expression for participation and a degree of tolerance and recognition that is the substance of wasatiya in moderation then we also read in the quran on the subject of hiwar in mujadala peaceful engagement and and disputation in mujadala with the different others this is the quranic advice guiding muslims whenever they engage with the different communities in tradition that they must do so in the best of forms billati hiya ahsan the way that is best most tactful and recognizing the differences in providing space for reasonable exchange this is also an advocacy of the middle path that is grounded in the sources of islam another quranic principle that uh, substantiates the governing principle of wasatiya which is expounded in the book that i have written is the idea of cooperation in ta'awun in the quran we read in an address to the muslim community not exactly to the muslim community to everyone ta'awanu ala al-birri wa at-taqwa cooperate in good works in piety but you must not cooperate in transgression and sin wala ta'awanu 
الاسم والعدوان cooperation among Muslims and with other communities is a manifestation of Islam's impulse for for the pursuit of the middle path and bringing out the best in ourselves and those with whom we engage. Then the Quran provides guidelines for how Islam must moderate itself from within. This is wasatiya in the practice of religion. And there are many Quranic verses to this to this effect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for this nation, for the Muslims, to bring ease and avoid hardship and avoid inflicting hardship on others. There are so many verses in this, on this subject. The Prophet, peace be upon him, instructed his companions Yassiru wala tu'assiru makes things easy for people and do not make things difficult for them. Give them good news if you can and avoid repelling them and giving them bad news. Other aspects of relevance to the personal character in conduct of individual that many are manifested in so many places in the Quran is patience, sabr, modesty, and haya, that is humility. These are major Islamic principles and also the principle of being good to others, that is the principle of ihsan and also dignified resistance to anger and provocation. That is the principle of hell, halim. We also find guidelines in the same sources on financial moderation, avoidance of extravagance and excess, and also of tight-fistedness. Do not stretch out your hand to the extent that it that verges on prodigality and extravagance, nor be tight fisted. This is the same advice of the middle path of moderation. Then Islam also recognizes urf, that is the custom, the general custom in culture of the society. It is in fact recognized as a valid source of law in judgment. And urf, or general custom, manifests the way that it is convenient to the people. They determine how they practice certain things by way of culture and engagement with others as well as regulating their personal conduct. This is an address in the nature of a command. Take to forgiveness and command according to what that is practiced by the people, by the people of sound nature and intellect. In turn away from those who are ignorant and out of ignorance try to drive you into provocation and anger. You must, you must show dignified resistance and not be moved by provocation. This is, these are the guidelines of the Quran and there is so much also in the same sources on the subject of forgiveness, of being forgiving. al kazimin al ghayza wal afina anin nas Those who swallow their anger and they forgive people. 
and they are forgiving. There is in a hadith that no one grants forgiveness to others, but that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them great, greatness and honor and dignity. Forgiveness is a mark of personal honor and dignity, which brings spiritual reward. I have also included a chapter in my book how Sufism and spirituality moderates the strictures of legalism. The spiritual self of Islam, and there is so much wealth and richness of advice and practice of great leaders. And this must also work as a moderator on this so much emphasis on, on legalism in Sharia. The religion is really an advice of compassion and kindness to people, not so much about punishment, law, and so on. But the tradition has followed a certain path. Perhaps we need a corrective to bring it to the middle path. And then moderation in jihad. There is clear uh, advice indeed. We are commanded to be moderate. If there is occasion that there should be jihad, military engagement, civilians must be safe, their women and children in the elderly must not be harmed, this is the clear advice of the Prophet Muhammad, his companions. Even to the extent that you must not destroy livestock or trees on animals and that your target is only those who have been aggressive towards you. There are rules preceding engage, military engagement during the course of it and after that. And this is something that Islam distinct, distinguishes itself from the Roman traditions. The Roman traditions, the laws are silent during the war. In Islam, it is the opposite. The laws are still operative. I have expounded these in a number of other principles. In fact, what the Muslims have done and are doing by way of giving the principle of moderation in the middle part, a substance and clear visibility. There are so many institutional development. Three or four institutions of Wasatiya in this country, the Global Movement of Moderates Foundation, and so many other countries in the Muslim world. This is our commitment, and this is the guidelines that we have in our sources. I thank you, Tuanku, and I am grateful for the occasion and the opportunity, the honor that you have granted to us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.